Previously yeah. on All About Parvin. Of course, people that are in the group don't support what's going on, and, and they approach it in different ways. Some are really angry. If I had to have a job, I wasn't married, I hadn't had any of these things going on, I would have long been at a hungry strike long ago, and this thing would have been over. Either me and the ground dead, or this Parvin Butte thing would have been finished. So Gammy said, well, the law says there has to be trees, but it doesn't say how big. You know, and I think that Faye Stewart and those conservatives up there probably think that they're making the world a better place. They probably think that they're public servants. They probably think somehow that by supporting people like the McDougal brothers and these kind of corporations, these quote developers, that they are making the world a better place. But it all comes down to that fundamental flaw of logic. And you know what? That goes back to Leopold, Aldo Leopold. I don't know if you've read any Aldo Leopold, but when he said, we abuse the land when we think of the land as a commodity belonging to us rather than a community to which we all belong. And I think that's what it comes down to. How close can we get? We can get right to that house. Sam. Uh lives there and he's given us permission to bring whomever up to see what's going on. I know some old time people who've lived around here old times don't tend to be so political maybe or talk up so much. Um, I can just, when they talk about it, you know, you can just feel it's just like breaking them inside this place that's been, you know, they've lived in for 30, 40 years, you know, raised their children, um, you know, planned to live out their lives and just watching this mountain that was their next door neighbor being torn down. It's very sad. So that's pretty much where they took all the 200 foot buffer and down, down in that direction also. They pretty much took every tree off of here and uh, hauled them out. Um, and then we filed a complaint with Dogami. So they pretty much uh, came out, looked at the trees, uh, said, well, yeah, they should probably put those trees back. So supposedly, which I don't see any growing, uh, the trees are supposed to be there. And uh, in 20 or 30 years, they'll have a buffer back. Oh. But then the, the man will be gone. Uh, yeah, that's right. Clearly, it violates the intent of the law, but not the way Dogami sees it, and not the way our three conservative Lane County commissioners see it. Well, Phil, you raise an issue which we could spend the next two hours talking about, about property rights. Uh, you know, whose property rights? I mean, we, it's, it's interesting here, isn't it? Uh, you're saying that these people are protecting, the, the commissioners are protecting the property rights of those people over there. Well, what about your property rights? You're going to talk to Jay Bozovich or any of those people that are very quick to talk about property rights and laissez-faire about uh, people's ability to do what they want on their property and so on. It's all very well if you're looking in a little narrow box like this. Yeah. But what happens to the next property owner and this property owner? and this species over here that's affected, and this, that, and the other. Uh, 
yeah, pretty soon right. you get the notion that maybe we're in this together and are all those property rights, are all are we going to be able to do quote unquote what we want to be able to do on our property, exclusive of those other people's property rights? It's where do, where do you come down on whose property rights takes precedence over somebody else? You know, I hope that if the county and, and the state um, can't you know, protect our property rights, then I suppose, you know, we've got to look to the courts to, to see if they can. Does this uh, put any additional pressure upon your family dynamic between your mom and your dad and you? Oh, oh certainly. It's, um, it's amazingly stressful, particularly on my dad. Um, it's, it's made things very trying. Um, the stress has definitely impacted us. What kind of stress? Well, um, it's, uh, it's really galvanized my dad. I mean, he's... He's so incredibly concerned about this, and it's, he's, uh, he's not happy. He's, um, he's stressed enough that it's, uh, wearing off on my mom and I. Um, uh, a lot of times we have to calm him down uh, whenever he hears some new piece of news about the Butte whenever someone um, in government um, again decides to not do things the way that really they should be done, whenever some new frustrating piece of news comes in, um, a new piece of stress comes in. So yeah, you know, Sam is, is right. It affects my behavior. It affects you know my how I you know work as a as a father and as a, uh, a husband and as a you know just uh, just as a man. It's it's not. It hasn't been. It's like kind of like three years of living under siege, and it has had a. It has taken an impact. I moved out here to Dexter for some peace and some quiet. Looks like that wasn't too smart. Next 20 years, blasting in dust. Might not be good for my heart. Carving away, carving away. Carving away, carving away, carving away in my heart. These people are affected. Their lives are totally changed. Ours is slightly changed, but Phil and a bunch of other people, I mean, it's right there. It's in their face, and they, it, to live with that is going to be detrimental to their health and I don't believe that Dougals or Demers really care. The other thing I heard from Dexter is politically irrelevant. Mm. And I said, what do you mean by that? He said, how much money did you give to Faye Stewart? I said, well, we didn't give him any. He said, how much did McDougals give to Faye Stewart? He said, just do the math. It's all part of public record. Hey, sons of bitches. You just feel hopeless. I, I, you know, I, I often think of, there's some analogy here, like if, if someone were standing at your door with a gun and threatening your life, you could call the county sheriff, and the county sheriff would actually come and would do something about that person with the gun at your door if, you know, you were so lucky to get the sheriff. And, um, but this... It's like we're going to hold a gun to your head for 20 years and you might get sick, you might die sooner, you might be stuck in this place without being able to move, you might lose your hearing, you might not be able to breathe, but 
there's nobody to call, you know? There's, what part of government is gonna come? Yes, they were in violation when they took the trees down, but we made them replant. And I said, well, why don't you wait 10 to 15 years till those trees are big enough that they provide a visual buffer? I said, well, we can't do that. Close down the industry. Yeah. It would certainly uh, change their way of doing business. Maybe they would follow the intent of the law, which is to leave the trees there. You know, if this were the old days, I would challenge those three guys to a duel. I would say, you know, you're you're impacting me in such a way that, you know, I would I would like to take you on. But you know, we don't you know, we don't live in, in that kind of society anymore. And they have you know, they have the power. They've got the attorneys and, and they the county is on their side, the state is on their side. I guess, you know, I would like to, to them to look in the mirror and, and entertain the notion that they are uh, bullies, big bullies. Next time on All About Park. From what we've seen in the McDougals and the Demers, these are people who would like to have as much control of the basic resources in the county as they can get a hold of, and they've done a pretty damn good job of getting a hold of that at this point. Parvin Butte is just one very small part of a vast operation of these people, particularly the McDougals. Yeah.